there we go. We've got our first shiny. This is awesome. And our first shiny paradox Pokemon in these games. And you can see it works. In today's video, I'm going to show you the best method we've currently got in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for shiny hunting. There are a few prereqs before we get into this. You're going to need to be in the post game and have access to five star raids to collect an item called Herb Amistica. It is the item that we're going to be basing this whole shiny hunting method around. So it is quite an important one. And obviously, if you aren't that far along in your story yet, there are probably going to be a few spoilers. Bookmark this video and come back to it when you are. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can always unsubscribe later if you would like to. Sandwiches play a big part within a lot of things you can do in Scarlet and Violet. They offer boosting powers to an array of different facilities within these games. You can get hatching power, egg power, encounter power, and experience power. But the big one that we're going to be concentrating on in today's video is sparkling power. Now, sparkling power is only obtainable by using a certain item. We mentioned it at the start of the video, and that is Herba Mystica. Herba Mystica is a specific item drop that is only available from five and six star terror raids. Once you've beat one of these higher ranking raids, you will have the chance for a Herba Mystica to be one of the items rewarded. Now I've done a full guide on the channel with how you can best approach farming Herba Mystica and the five and six terror raids. So check the video out. It will be linked up in the top right hand corner now. It might be a lot of help for you in this process. And because this item is so time consuming to get and it is a rare item, it's not something that you want to waste. So I'd advise every time before you start a shiny hunt using this method to save your game, take auto saves off. So if your upcoming hunt doesn't produce the results you want, you can always reset your game, try it again, and you're not losing those precious Herba Mysticas. And just so you're aware, if you do complete your Pokedex and have access to the shiny charm, this will only further increase the odds of shinies appearing as the sparkling power does stack with this item. And the other ingredients that you're going to need are available at an abundance of deli stores around the Paldea region. You want to look out for shirkans, which can be found in pretty much most towns around the Paldea region and the Artisan Bakery. These two stores between them will sell each and every ingredient that you're going to need to create specific sandwiches for whatever you're shiny hunting. And there are five types of different Herba Mystica. There are spicy Herba Mystica, bitter, sour, salty, and sweet and we'll be using this sandwich recipe that has been put together by the time is nigh over on the gba temp.net forums this will be linked down in the description if you want to use this for your own reference of sandwich recipes to get this sparkling power on certain encounters so for today's example i'm gonna hunt for the dark type paradox pokemon that appear down in area zero because i know there are a lot of dark pokemon appearing down there it makes sense to create a dark encounter a power sandwich with a sparkling boost on top of it. This sandwich is not only going to boost the spawning rate of dark types, but it will boost the sparkling power of these Pokemon as well. And there's one Pokemon specifically in Roaring Moon that I would love to be able to catch. If I am able to get this in a shiny form, I can also get Brute Bonnet, which is the Amoongus Paradox form, which is a grass and dark type, as well as Dino, which appears, and that would mean I can get a shiny high dragon. So there are three Pokemon that I can do with just one sandwich language recipe. So in game, like I said, the first thing before we do anything, once we've got our Herba Mystica and our sandwich ingredients is just save your game just in case anything goes wrong and just make sure that you have your auto saves off. So the first thing we're going to want to do is specifically if you're hunting in area zero, you'll have to come out of area zero to set up a picnic. So we're just outside of the crater and we're going to set up a picnic and we are going to make a sandwich. So going off the Herba Mystica sandwich recipe list, we want to first hit our X button on our controller and as we are going for dark dark types we want to use the dark type recipe which is smoked fillet one salty herba mystica and one sweet herba mystica and there's our smoked fillet so that's one of our ingredients that's the only ingredient we're going to need other than the herba mystica you want to press the plus button this will bring you to the next screen and then you want to come down and find your herba mystica so one salty herba mystica and one sweet herba mystica and then press next and this will take us to creating our sandwich 
As I say, only one ingredient, you can't really get it wrong. Just make sure that you don't drop any of these on the way to doing it because it will affect the sandwich. And this is why it's also a good reason just to save before you start this process. Like Herba Mystica are super difficult to come across. You don't want to get this wrong. So there we go, sandwich all done. be that level three power. So increased power, you can see sparkling power, idle power and encounter power, all for dark, which is exactly what we want for where we'll be hunting. So now we'll just pack up our picnic and to check how much time that you've got on your sandwich and the powers that you've got, you can hit the right directional controller on your D-pad. This will bring up this screen and it'll show you the time you've got left until the sandwich powers run out. The first place we're gonna wanna go is area zero. We're gonna wanna go to research station three because we're gonna go after Roaring Moon, which is the paradox form of Salamence. So we wanna come out of here. And Salamence is kind of hidden as a paradox Pokemon. Not super easy to find. And you've got to know exactly where you're going to get it because it is hidden away and it will appear in only a couple of places down in area zero. So we want to just come past these rocks here. But we should already start to see more Brute Bonnets appearing and spawning in the wild. And hopefully we do get a shiny pretty quickly. There will be a plethora of dark types appearing in this area as well. So we're gonna get Dino, we're gonna get Sableye, Umbrian can appear here, as well as a bunch of other things as well. You're gonna get access to Bishop down in area zero and to kind of initiate or get started with kind of Pokemon respawning, you can use the let's go feature to knock Pokemon out if you want, or you can run in and out of the areas just to make more spawn. That is not the shiny that we're after. So what we'll do is we'll just leave the cavern and then we'll come straight back in and we'll see if that populates a shiny. By doing this as well, we can just run into this area to see if anything else spawns. We're getting lots of Brute Bonnets because we've got the Dark Encounter power active. So that plus three, you can see the amount of Amoongus spawning as we're just running through the area. There is really nothing else we need to do. The amount of Brute Bonnets is absolutely ridiculous. And every Brute Bonnet that does spawn has an increased rate to be a shiny. So we're rolling the dice with every single spawn that we're getting in this area. And because of that sparkling power level three, it means that the shiny, the shiny chances for these Pokemon are increased significantly. Significantly. And you can see here we've got two Roaring Moons here. Neither of these are shiny though, so we'll just keep wandering through the cave system. It is very early on in this sparkling power. Got Dinos in here as well, which are going to be potentially shiny as well as the Sneasels. And there we go, we've got our first shiny. It is a Sneasel and the dog part is working so we can get this Sneasel. And there we go, first shiny. And there that looks like a critical capture. And there's a first shiny, so that didn't take long at all. And that's the first one. So hopefully we get some more and we'll continue just wandering around here, respawning Pokemon. I'm using a combination of just wandering and then using the Let's Go facility just to kind of despawn Pokemon to force more new spawns in. Because every time you do that, you're going to get a chance of the dice rolling and a new spawn coming in in place of that one. Okay, another Roaring Moon on the bank here, and is that? That's a shiny, that's a shiny, we've got the shiny. Hasn't even been that long and we've got the shiny. This is so awesome. The target Pokemon that we were after hasn't been too long, maybe about 15 minutes of hunting and it has spawned. So the way to do this is basically just by despawning and respawning Pokemon. Because of the encounter power, you're gonna get increased amounts of that particular type. In this case, it is dark type and we are just wanting to run around the area as you can see now. And by doing so, we're getting to a distance away from the spawned Pokemon where they despawn and we're running into a new area where we're getting new spawns. So we're continually doing this and despawning and respawning new Pokemon. And every time we do this, like we've said, we're getting a new dice roll for a shiny Pokemon to appear. And this method can be done for multiple Pokemon down in area zero. You're gonna get a lot of Pokemon that share the same types. You're gonna be able to take massive advantage of the ability of having 
building something like Herba Mystica uh, on a specific type and then hunting for those Pokemon and lots of them appearing. In particular, we did a ground boosting sparkling power using the sandwich recipe of ham and two salty Herba Mystica. And although we didn't catch many shinies when we were down in the area, we did manage to come across Paradox Donphan and get great tusks in its shiny form, which looks absolutely incredible. So that was our first shiny that we got down here. We've also had other runs where we've had Brute Bonnet. And although most runs yield about two to three shinies for the 30 minutes, sometimes it is only one. And there have been a few cases where I've done a run and I've had no shinies pop up at all. But this is why we save before we make the sandwich so you can just reset and then start again, not wasting your Herba Mystica because they are such a difficult item to procure. Let me know down in the comment section below how your shiny hunts are going in game. Have you managed to start shiny hunting with the sparkling power yet? Or are you planning on doing it very soon in your games? I would love to hear if you've had success, what Pokemon you've gotten, everything that you've been doing in regards to shiny hunting in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope you found this guide useful. If you have, drop a like on it. It really does help out the channel. If you're new to the channel as well, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest Pokemon on Scarlet and Violet guides. Thank you for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.